But, you know, things does say that you could toss them in the washing machine. It's just that the way that I grew up, before they go into the washing machine, I, I gotta wash them. Out of yoga, three legged dog, and everything. Happy New Year, guys. Um, this is my first video since the new year began, so Happy New Year is in order. I hope that you are all doing well as usual. Um, as the title of this video indicates, we're going to be talking about all things period and we're going to be uh, doing a sort of a random review on things the underwear that absorbs periods so before we actually get into uh, the mini review of sorts um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my personal experience as someone who's had periods as usual I really hope <laughs> that I've been looking in the right place like you would think I've done this so many times that I have this down pat I don't but anyways um, my period started around the age of 10 I think I was still 9 going on 10 it wasn't really a whole dramatic brouhaha I just looked down noticed some blood and brought it to my mom's attention and um, I remember she got me some pads and she showed me how to use them I didn't get any crazy talks about um, Oh, now you're having your period you got to stay away from boys like you know some people probably get um, I don't even think I got the birds and the bees talk I was just told basically what to do how to take care of myself my mom was very particular about um, how how I should care for myself physically um, when those five days arose each month and so the focus was more on hygiene and um, how to manage any other symptoms that I might have physically in terms of pain and that sort of thing and that's a whole like that's a whole I feel like that's a whole other video on the plethora of herbs and natural stuff that um, we employ through the years for pain management but that's a whole other video basically um that was it and just imagine at nine or ten suddenly going from this little girl i wasn't particularly a tomboy but i i feel like i was more a girl who would sort of romp with the boys not really a tomboy per se but you know i had a lot of um friends who were boys and i would roll and tumble with them like everybody else I'm not worried about anything and suddenly you have this thing where you have to put on pads between your leg for five days um, every month and I feel like one of the things I can speak to um, in terms of having periods so young is that your consciousness turns inwards you become you can become maybe it doesn't happen to everyone but you can become pretty self-conscious about suddenly having to be concerned about having a period um, I've seen a documentary I remember some time ago about young girls that age who have periods and just the pros and cons of having a period that young and the toll it takes on uh, a girl's confidence on her self-esteem and just how it affects her not just at that point in her life but um, as life progresses and so it, it wasn't easy because what do we all want when we're having periods a level of security you know what I'm saying because now you know you're you're wearing pads and for me when I when I started having my periods my periods from the time I started they were pretty heavy and so just imagine now it's not only that you have this bulky contraption between your legs but you you know you could you're feeling you're feeling the moisture of having your period oh god I don't even you're having to if you have heavy periods you're having to change your pads regularly throughout the day I'm nine. you know what I'm saying not only am I nine but I don't like use I don't know what it is I've never liked using public restrooms my mom used to tell me this funny story where she would say that as a young girl she'd take me to public restrooms and she she'd try everything she could you know to make me comfortable put down you know the, the little cover seat covers and everything and I would not she could not get me to sit stand do nothing I remember going to school secondary school and a lot of the times 
I would try to drink early in the morning, go to the bathroom, not have to use the bathroom at school throughout the entire day until the day was over. I go home and do whatever it is that I have to do. It doesn't matter what it is. So at nine, the thought of having to go to the bathroom now to change pads was something that I didn't want to do. So I was just busy running around with everyone else, acting like I didn't have adult responsibilities at this point. And so I remember there were a few times where um, I got messed up and the only thing that saved me from the embarrassment was the fact that at that time we wore these really dark gray jumpers and so you know you could barely ever see anything and I just remember that being a really difficult and uncomfortable point in time for me. Another challenge that I faced through the years as time progressed was apart from pain, um, I also had a lot of allergic reactions to the pads that I used to use. I started out with Always, I don't know if it was the weaving they were using at the time that caused an allergic reaction. I switched to Stay Free, but Stay Free at the time had these like straight pads. There was no contouring, so they weren't comfortable. And then I eventually switched to Kotex, which had um, a better shape and I didn't have any reactions to that, which is weird because later on, I eventually had to abandon Kotex because they changed, uh, I don't know if it was the materials they were using, they changed the whole packaging and the materials and I became allergic to that as well. And so now um, I literally only use cotton pads, that's it. But um, I never wanted to use tampons, I remember that, I didn't want to deal with the whole, uh, this whole absorbency thing and trying to make sure you I did just didn't want to deal with that so for me pads were always it and because my periods were so heavy I often had to sometimes buy like the, the biggest and longest pads they had and still overlap them and still change them how many times a day so as we all know I mean I, I my thoughts on periods now are a lot different to what they were as I were growing up because I was in the middle of the experience but if I were to have a girl um, there's so much that I would try to do differently in terms of diet, in terms of education, in terms of allowing her to understand that periods, like other things that we experience, childbirth, blah, 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 um, are natural parts of um, our body's function. And sometimes the way we experience things have a lot to do with our perspective and the, the thoughts and just the ideas that have floated around for however many centuries about the experience of having a period. I mean, you can go back in history. That point in time when women are having their periods is a point in time when women are kind of just set apart. I think in some cases, it's often because, just imagine way back when, um, you moving around with a period, not having a way to secure yourself. And so that probably contributed to, to, to women not being an active part of society during that time. So enter Thinx. And come to find out that Thinx is not the only brand that's making period underwear, but this is the one that I first discovered on Instagram. And I feel like we've all sort of been making our own version of these Thinx or just period underwear through the years, haven't we? I mean, if, if most of us look back, during our periods, we all have special underwear that we use because what, they fit better, they help keep pads in place better, they're just more comfortable during that time. But what I like about the whole concept of things and period underwear is that it takes the idea of security and fit and um, comfort and just brings it all together in underwear that you can wear with or without a pad or a tampon if you so choose. So let's get into a little bit about the mission of things. Um, things holds as some of their uh, objectives, uh, apart from the fact that it's underwear that absorbs your period, um, you can wear them with or without pads, tampons, um, but they are out here to educate young girls and anyone who has a period on everything from menstrual equity to period poverty to our bodies to sex and how our reproductive organs function and reproductive health um, and their aim also is to help reduce our plastic footprint according to things in one year of using things they say we could each reduce our plastic footprint by disposing of 156 plus 
less disposable tampons, pads, etc. And that's each of us. Each of us as, it, as, as, as persons that have periods. So that's huge. They're pretty cool because they have an adult line, they have um, a girl's line, and they have a line for those who are suffering with uh, bladder incontinence. Uh, they have uh, sizes from, I think it's extra, extra small to, uh, is it 4X? I think it's 4X. Um, they have multiple colors. When I first started, it was mostly underwear. Now they have leggings, they have training shorts, um, they have underwear and products of varying levels of absorbency so if you're someone who bleeds a little heavier you're someone that bleeds a little lighter you can adjust um, your choices based on, on on those qualities what's also great is that they make the process very interactive and engaging so when you go to the site first you have to go through a little questionnaire where you tell them a little bit about your period the length of your period um, the way that you bleed whether your periods tend to be lighter or heavier and based on that they make recommendations so my recommendations when i went to the site were for the hip hugger and the boy short and they also make a recommendation basically about how many um, aunties you should get to support yourself during that time so um, I purchased the hip huggers and boy shorts in black and um, the size small and I'm just gonna get into my experience with the product so the first one that I tried was the boy shot. Luckily for me, my period came when I was actually at home and off that day. And so it came close to the evening period. I showered, put on the, the boy shots, and I said, okay, since I'm at home, I'm gonna test this to the max and I am just I'm not gonna wear, I'm not gonna wear a pad. Usually on the first day it's light and then start starts getting heavier into the second day, so I wasn't too concerned. And so um I slept overnight in them without any any anything additional. Um, didn't feel uncomfortable. Woke up, sheets were good. Uh, my my leggings, nightgown were good. Um, and the best part about it was I didn't feel like usually when I am having my period and wearing just pads, immediately I get up, gotta go straight to shower, gotta go straight to the shower. You just feel uncomfortable. You just it, it, just think of a baby in a wet pamper. <laughs> but that's what it feels like, I'm assuming. But I don't remember what it feels like to wear pampers, but I'm just saying, I think that that is probably what it feels like. You just wanna, you, you know, this is why this is why you change multiple times in the day, so that you don't have to feel that discomfort. So what's great was I didn't have that experience with the boy shots. Um, they say that with these underwear, there's a point where it gets the max absorbency. You'll be able to tell um, based on the fact that it's you can feel more moisture. I did not have that experience when I first got up. So I said, oh, let me do some yoga. Now, let me tell you, usually I don't exercise during my period. I don't do any yoga during my period just because, like I said, even though, you know, through the years from teen times, you have special undies that you wear and usually if i remember correctly my mom back then she got me like these girdles that were really super tight that would keep everything in place but still you just never felt like i just never felt comfortable doing exercise apart from the pain i just never felt comfortable doing any kind of exercise so i just take five days off every month but quite frankly i said okay i'm testing this so let me just try it so i did my yoga three-legged dog and everything no issues didn't feel like anything was gonna escape anywhere uh, and I'd say it did its job pretty well so the next one I wanted to try was the hip hugger and I was going to work the next day and I said should I just go to work without any additional support just wear the hip hugger I wasn't that confident in the product yet I just started using them so I said nah I'm gonna wear the hip hugger I'm gonna wear the hip hugger but I'm gonna wear it with you know just my regular pad my second days are usually a lot heavier and which it was uh, did I have any mishaps anything that escaped the pad got totally caught by the hip hugger let's just put it like that and so um, my initial experience was a good one I was like oh this, this isn't so bad 
but since then i have had many periods because i bought these a while ago i've been meaning to do this review for a minute and i have worn them to work without pads i've worn them at home with and without pads i've even worn them when i haven't had my periods and i'm gonna tell you they are comfortable they do what they say they are supposed to do um I say that if you're going to if you have really really heavy periods and you're going to work or out you might want to support yourself with whatever you normally use your tampons or your pads um, or maybe get a higher level of, of absorbency that's another option that you you can take but I wanted to talk a little bit about how the product is made so um, the product is made of the fabric that they use the body of it is 89% nylon and 11% elastane the gusset which is the central part of it um, is 95% cotton 5% elastane and middle breathable pull it feels very thick on the inside it has multiple layers the outside of the ones that I have feel kind of sat satiny but there's no satin in there so the care instructions say that you should rinse after use and that you can machine wash them in a mesh laundry bag on a delicate delicate cycle with softener or bleach and you can hang dry. I've only machine washed mine one time. The one thing that I would say you might want to be wary of if I'm going to talk about um, maybe some of the cons to these zombies and I wouldn't even call it a con because you experience this with different types of clothing just depending on the fabric and the dye. Uh, I say that when I washed my, both of them actually, I did notice some bleed of color in the water and I washed my hand. And this happened for two washes. So I would really advise you if you're gonna machine wash them to wash them with light colors or wash them separately by hand, at least in the beginning, just to make sure that that's not the case. But that was my experience. Um, another thing I'd want to mention that some people might be concerned about is in terms of the fabric if you are um, trying to live a sustainable life and uh, trying to be more concerned about your footprint and definitely these are seem more appealing but I know there will be those people who say well what about the nylon and what about the, the middle breathable pull because a lot of people all of a sudden have um, a great deal of concern about middle breathable pull and um, whether or not it's toxic to us and in terms of nylon its production its effect on uh, our environment it's a trade-off you know as most things are you know the sad thing is just our mere existence as human beings means that uh, we're we're gonna do some damage the aim is to minimize that as much as possible so it really just depends on how you look at it are, are you that person that will buy um, a natural Christmas tree every year because you know that it's natural and then at the end of the Christmas season you can just chip it down and it'll be absorbed back into the earth somewhere or reused or are you that person that sees yourself also as sustainable because you buy a synthetic Christmas tree but you keep it for years and years and years on end it, everything for some people is a matter of perspective so apart from things, I also wanted to mention another really great brand that I've since been uh, purchasing as well, which is Ruby Love. Ruby Love is black owned. Um, and not only are they black owned, they have a wide range of products from onesies to leggings and everything featuring um, very similar technology. It's not They're not made quite the same as things, but they're pretty awesome as well. You might want to check them out. I'll link them in the description box. There's, there's a couple other companies as well if you want to check those out. Um, another company I wanted to mention um, was Femly because uh, they are the... They, that, those are the pads that I use right now, the cotton pads that I use. I just, I love Family. I, I love the product. Uh, they have panty liners, um, regular and overnight. My only beef with Family is that I wish that the overnight, because my, like I said, my periods are heavy. And so the only thing that I wish is that the overnight were a little longer. So I, you know, they're thin and for some reason, I don't know how they do it, but even though my peers are heavy, it's fine. Even though they're thin, I do overlap them, but sometimes overnight, they're just not long enough. You know what I'm saying? And I have to 
so I have to use more of them and the boxes are really tiny but um they're a great brand definitely check them out also yeah I, I the funny thing is I've always had heavy periods but I have been checked for fibroids I have no fibroids um, since I've changed my diet years ago I have noticed some changes in terms of pain and um, my experience with certain things like bloating and a lot of that is not the way it was growing up you know I also want to link uh, some companies that are like uh, a little bit like things in terms of addressing period poverty and um, advocating for menstrual equity not just here in the US but in other parts of the world I came across um, a video about a young lady named Stephanie she was married to uh, a Maasai man and one of the things she said was that a lot of the young girls there for the period of time when they were actually menstruating they had to not that they had to but because they have no pads and things like that they were sort of kept from doing the things that they would normally do and she started making something very similar to these period underwear uh, where she just made an underwear with a little section that you could put a cotton pad that she made put that in and they all came in a pouch and they could reuse them and wash them sell them I just thought it was pretty awesome and this is the same concept you know we you'd be surprised to know how many people um, struggle with getting pads each time their period comes around every month it's it's like pampers you know they're not cheap well pampers take the cake but it may seem like something really simple but I do think it's important to ensure that anyone who has a period um, can have access to the things that they need to support themselves during that time and feel confident comfortable secure and not have to trick themselves or feel shame or feel uh, uncomfortable about experiencing what is a natural part of life um, I, that's why I did this video I feel like there's so much and maybe some of it comes to in me still because I'm sure some of it is still in here but there seems to be so much discomfort around so many topics even at this time that we are so much discomfort in talking about periods, discomfort in talking about sex, and about talking about our bodies. And I just wanted to do a little video addressing that. And I hope this helps somewhat. I think things are really a great gift if you have a daughter. It probably needs to start out with the education of this is a natural part of your body. Um, the, these fluids are a natural part of your body's cleansing process. You don't have to be afraid of washing your own auntie because you know you might encounter a little bit of resistance when you buy these for your teen girl. Maybe if you don't have a little talk with her about those things where she doesn't want to wash that. Get them comfortable with, well, why are we using this as opposed to just using a pad? You present them both options and tell them the pros and cons. And hopefully they will be willing to incorporate things. But anyway, I hope that this video was educational and useful to someone. Um, I feel by now, because like I said, I was supposed to do this video a long time ago. A lot of people are probably on to period underwear already and know of their existence. Um, it's a great thing to have. Like, it's amazing how, you know, there's so many things that you can commercialize, if, if I'm to say it like that. But we fail to see opportunity in it because how's that saying that ghost necessity is the mother of invention and I know so many of us through the years have struggled with period issues we've created our own little inventions but nobody ever took it to the next level until recently so kudos to things kudos to Ruby Love kudos to all those who are working in this arena I am going to link a couple of the organizations who like I said are working to address the issues of period poverty and maybe if you feel like it you can go check them out and support them in whatever way you feel called to uh, guys thanks for watching this video and I do have hope that you have an amazing rest of the day um, yeah and so why do I keep doing that <laughs> three two one this video was totally uncomfortable at to some level and so um, the focus was on 
how how on three two one three two one anyway just continue filming all right girl because we ain't got time to be stopping and start this all the time la just cut it because i don't know what you're saying yeah, yeah.